What is going on YouTube? It's your boy Spanko and today I'm excited because the ban list dropped. Uh, I didn't like the ban list too much if I'm being honest, but there's one really cool thing that happened on the ban list and that is that Light Stage came back to three. Yes! Light Stage is back to three so we can play pure Trickstar again. It's very, very consistent. It's very, very powerful. If you guys enjoyed these post list deck profiles, well, make sure to like and subscribe to the channel for more Yu-Gi-Oh! content just like this one. We upload five days a week here on Spanko. We're going to be doing a bunch of updated deck profiles because the list was just announced. So make sure you guys stay tuned to see all of that content. Now, I'm really excited because Light Stage being back at three means that pure Trickstar can compete again. Trust me when I say when you guys see this list, you're going to see how consistent it is. And it's also really good into the metagame. It may be somewhat of an anti-meta deck but it's just really good in general so i don't want to keep you guys waiting for too long let's get right into the deck profile all right guys i am so excited because trickstar is back pretty much at full power with light stage back to three now i will say this just before we get into the profile it still says it's at two here because edo pro hasn't updated yet but it's at three as of the most recent ban list starting in october 3rd which is insane so pure trickstar here it is i'm really excited to be showing it to you guys let's get into it the first thing we're playing of course is three trickstar candy such as any trick star from your deck on summon which is really important so it is of course your best normal summon in the deck we are playing three licorice licorice i actually really like at three because it helps you dodge effects from your candina so what i mean by that is if you normal summon your candina your opponent has a veiler or has an imperm you can actually dodge it with the licorice which is really nice also licorice at three is really important because it actually helps you do a lot of burn damage this deck naturally doesn't do a lot of battle damage so the burn damage is really important because if you get your opponents low enough you can actually go and try to push for game really quickly it's surprising how fast this card will actually rack up a lot of damage so that's why you want to be playing three then we are playing three Corobane because as you guys can see this is actually a level five or rank five i guess you could say turbo deck the deck doesn't really do a lot of battle damage on its own so for that reason you kind of need to get access to a lot of really good cards in your extra deck both for going second but also for going first because you set up something like a Pleiades. Pleiades is a very good disruption on your turn as well and it doesn't require you to use your licorice so if you have licorice plus like a Pleiades on the field then essentially you're going to be doing burn damage but you're also going to have other forms of disruption which is really powerful so that's why i play three corbane you really want to get to this as fast as possible the reason you're also maxing out on these is because you would rather not have to search them with your candina candina is one of those cards that you really want to be searching your reincarnation especially if you have droll and lockbird because you guys know this is an fdk so for that reason you really don't want to be searching the licorice or the corbane you really want to open them in your hand but the one if you ever do want to search it's going to be the lily bell of course we all know how powerful this card is so you do want to play the one lily bell and of course, the card that just came off the ban list, I'm so happy it's back. Three Trickstar Light Sage. This card has so many different applications. I feel like because it's been at one and two for so long now, people forget how powerful this card really is. Not just in those strategies that use it to search Lily Bell so I have a level two so I can summon a sprite monster. Nah, forget that. In this deck, this card is insanely powerful. So first of all, if you guys didn't know, on activation, you can add a trick star to your hand, of course. Then, once per turn, you can target a set card your opponent controls, and you pretty much lock that card. They have to either activate it right then and there, or in the end phase, it's going to get sent to the graveyard. So that effect is also really, really powerful. But then the third effect is each time a trick star does battle or effect damage, your opponent also takes 200 points of damage. So remember how earlier I was talking about how Licorice does a bunch of damage and it kind of racks up? Light Stage helps you do even more burn damage. So that's why you have to be playing this card. Of course, you have to be playing it at three. This card is insanely powerful the one terraforming because we can now get to our light stage which is really really powerful candina also searches our light stage Light stage being at three is actually monumental it's huge for this deck and then we're of course playing the three reincarnation as well as the three droll and lock bird this is just fdk on its own if you resolve the reincarnation droll lock your opponent is not playing Yu-Gi-Oh. so that's why you have to be playing this there's no argument to not play this you have to be playing these six and then the next cards you guys are going to play are going to help with our rank five engine which is three ready fusion as well as one instant fusion now, Instant Fusion has multiple applications that I'll discuss in a minute, but Ready Fusion is actually really, really powerful because essentially Ready Fusion summons a level six or lower non-effect fusion monster. And the really cool thing is you have access to cards like Musician King, as well as Guilty of the D Knight, which are both level five monsters, but they're also both light, which gives you access to some really cool cards in your extra deck. So you want to be maxing out on these because it helps you get to your strategy faster. You really want to go first in this deck. Okay, let me just mention that you really want to go first. And this helps you essentially go first, set up a combo outside of just trap cards, right? We're also playing three pod of extravagance it's the only real draw power in this deck i personally like extravagance at three because again you can max out on all the cards that you need to max out on and then that's really it your extra deck doesn't need to be a toolbox in this deck because the 
deck itself is essentially just a toolbox. It has ways to deal with a lot of things on its own. You have back row hate, of course, here you have burn damage, you have an honest in your hand. So there's just so many different ways to actually already do things in the main deck that you don't need a toolbox extra deck. So what you want to do really is just max out on the essential cards you need in the extra deck and you're good to go. So that's why we're playing three extrav. Then we're playing three rivalry of the warlords and three goes in match. Yes, you can play floodgates in this deck. The reason for that is because they're all light fairy. So but you can play goes in and you can play rivalry. And the nice thing about rivalry and goes in is you can actually play around it yourself with your extra deck. Goes in match locks you into an attribute. Your extra deck monsters are going to be all light monster, right? So for that reason, goes in match is really good. Same thing with rivalry. You can play around it. So when you can play floodgates that are as powerful as rivalry and goes in, but also play around it yourself, it becomes really, really powerful. Going first and going second, these cards are also good because going second, these are board breaking cards. If your opponent doesn't necessarily have a negate, when it goes back to them, let's say they have a full monster board, you can just flip a goes in match or flip a rivalry. And if they can't negate that card or pop that card in that moment, it essentially breaks their entire board. So that's why these cards are really good going first, but they're also really good going second. Speaking of cards going first, we are playing triple trap trick. Now you guys might be wondering, what are you going to be searching with trap trick? Well, one, you can be searching your reincarnation, which is really good because if you only have one reincarnation plus a drool in hand, you can trap trick into the second reincarnation, which gets you into the lock, right? This is essentially six copies of reincarnation. But the other card that you can search, which is also really powerful in Trickstar, is Artifact Sanctum. Why are we searching Sanctum? Because Scythe is still a thing. The ban list did not want to answer Scythe. And Scythe being a thing is also really cool because Scythe, if you guys didn't notice, is also a light fairy. So you can play it through rivalry and goes in match as well. And after you use it for its main effect, it's a level five light monster. When it comes back to you, you can overlay this with a monster in your extra deck or with a Coral Bane, and then essentially just get access to a Pleiades, which is insanely powerful. So that's why I really like the one artifact scythe. And then of course, we're playing the one called by the grave. Now, another thing just before we get into the extra deck here is that red reboot went to zero. Red reboot going to zero is insane for this deck because it means you're not afraid of your trap cards activating and resolving. You know, they're always going to resolve especially games two and games three if your opponent doesn't draw into their back row hey they don't have access to something like a red reboot which just essentially shuts down your entire back row so that's really really cool it's a 40 card main deck on the dot it's very very consistent the thing that i love about this deck is with light stage back at three now the consistency is beyond like imaginable it's just so so consistent so then we're going to be moving on to the extra deck here we are playing three musician king as well as three guilty of the d knight these are really old cards they haven't had prints in probably years honestly i don't even know when the last time they had i'm pretty sure this is an mrd card like this might be like 20 years old at this point. That's how old these cards are. But they're level five non-effect monsters. They're both light, which is really nice because you can play them under Gozen match. And that's also really important because now you have level five access to with your Ready Fusion, with your Coral Bane, to get access to something like your Constellar Pleiades, which we're playing, of course, three of. You want to be maxing out of them, of course, like I said earlier, because we are playing three Extravagance. So we're playing three Pleiades. Pleiades is really cool because it has a quick effect, just bounce a card your opponent controls. So this is really nice, especially when you're paired it up with like a Licorice plus a Reincarnation or a Licorice plus a Gozen match. It's going to be really tough for your opponent to play through this. And then we're playing three Durandal. Now, Artifact Durandal is actually an insanely powerful card in this deck. First of all, it's a light fairy. Beautiful for this deck, right? So it just synergizes so well, but it has two really cool effects. So the first effect is when a monster effect is activated on the field, or when a normal spell or trap card is activated, you can detach a material from this card, and that effect becomes pop a back row card that your opponent controls. Now, it's really cool because if you end up drawing your scythe, you can essentially force their card to pop your scythe, which is really nice, and you're effectively negating their card. So that's really powerful with the Durandal, but Durandal's second effect is also really, really powerful. The first effect is cool, but again, that's only if you draw the Scythe. If you don't draw the Scythe, it's not that important. The second effect, though, is you can detach a material from this card. Each player with a hand shuffles their entire hand back into the deck and then draws the same number of cards as they shuffled into the deck. Now, why that effect is really cool? It's because it actually can trigger your Droll Reincarnation Lock. Guys, if you have Reincarnation and Droll in hand, but you don't have access to your second Reincarnation, you can actually just make the Durandal in your first turn. You can flip your Reincarnation nation you can activate the durandal then chain drool you're going to be able to shuffle back your hand your opponent's hand however because they're now under drool and lockbird they're not going to be able to add cards back to their hand so durandal is like a pseudo reincarnation drool lock this card is insanely cool it's insanely powerful in this deck it's also 2400 attack play to use 2500 so it's really good because like i said these monsters in themselves are pretty small so it being 24 and 25 especially when you do a ton of burn damage with your light stage with your licorice these can actually just help you push for game and then lastly we're playing the one 
tier ass. This card's like all right, it's not amazing, but it's just one of those things where if you have rivalry plus goes and up on your board and you want to go into the extra deck, this card is actually not bad. It's 2600, it's a light fairy level five, so it's really cool in that sense. It can be destroyed by card effects if it has Ixies materials under it, and then after it attacks, it pops a card your opponent controls, which is really kind of nice. So that's why I think this card is really neat. It's not like most necessary, that's why we're just playing one up, but it's just one of those cards where if you're under your goes and rivalry, you can go into this. Then we're playing the 1000 eyes as well as the one relinquished anima. This is specifically mostly for going second because we are playing the one instant fusion it rarely comes up but just because you can play it you might as well play it because you're pretty much breaking boards with just an instant fusion if instant fusion resolves going second and you can make a thousand eyes and then you can make an anima you're pretty much breaking two monsters your opponent controls just with the one instant fusion so that's why you want to be playing it that's it for the deck guys this deck is insane i think it's really consistent the pure build is now back i think it's very powerful as a pure build you don't need to be playing a bunch of really random engines you just really need to be playing the consistency cards which you are and the blowout cards which you are so that's the really cool thing that i love about this deck i think this deck is very consistent it's back it's back it's back i'm so excited thank you guys all for watching i definitely think you guys should try this out yourselves the really cool thing about trickstar and i might do this in the future is they actually have a lot of synergies with other decks so this is our pure trickstar build but maybe in the future we'll do some trickstar variants and trickstar combo decks so let me know what you guys think let me know what you guys want to see in the comment section down below and yeah i really hope you guys try this out for yourselves so that is it for today's video i hope you guys did enjoy so this is how you play trickstar are i think in this format post ban list because i think this format honestly is going to be a tier zero format maybe not tier zero but tier limits is definitely going to be the best deck of the format and playing stuff like rivalry and goes in playing stuff like scythe are all really powerful cards against tier limits reincarnation is absolutely busted against that deck so for that reason i think this deck actually can compete and it can find its way into today's metagame let me know in the comment section down below what you guys want to see post ban list make sure to like and subscribe if you guys haven't already we upload five days a week here on spanko post ban list stuff coming up soon we have a ton a ton of stuff coming up so make sure you guys stay tuned for that thank you guys all for watching and with that spanko signing out peace